going on, Pokemon trainers? Welcome to episode 115 of Gotta Watch Them All, the podcast that brings together trainers from every corner of Pokemon fandom before watching along with an episode of Pokemon the series, starting all the way back at episode one. But today we're going to be watching episode 115, a sappy ending. Gotta Watch Them All is part of the Pokemon Professor Network, and today is Saturday, April 3rd, 2021. I'm one of your hosts, Ken Pescatore, joined by my co-host, Adam Tuttle. Adam, hello. Welcome. What's up? Hi, trainers. Well, this episode sounds like it's going to really, you know, it's going to stick to you. I don't know if it's that kind of sap, is it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let's get some uh, some maple syrup on that. On those Adam waffles. is ready for the puns. He's here for it. He's here for it. I'm ready. My body's ready. Anyway, all right, so we got some stuff to talk about today. Uh, we'll start off with a little Pokemon Go. Uh, we will talk about the spring event that's going to be kicking off tomorrow from the day of this recording. Uh, we'll also take a look at the art of battle styles. This is something that uh, I've really been getting into lately and really enjoying the art of the cards. So we'll talk about some of the featured cards that Pokemon.com put together, showcasing art and artists. We'll take a look at the Pokemon Center and some of the newest releases, and there's some pretty awesome stuff on there that's a little bit outside of the box from the norm. And then we'll finally do our watch along with anime episode 115, a sappy ending. All right, Adam, let's uh, let's start off with Pokemon Go. I know that uh, you know there's been a lot going on in the game and it's super busy, but this Sunday, tomorrow, Easter Sunday here in the states. Uh, we have the annual spring event kicking off, and it's going to run from the 4th through the 8th, and along with it comes some super cute Pokemon, exclusive costumes, and a new Mega Raid boss. We're going to have uh, Pokemon like Pikachu with a Flower Crown, Execute, Meryl, Plusle, Minin, Buneary, and the release of Shiny, of Shiny Bunnelby uh, will be appearing in the wild. Uh, Chansey will also be available in the wild wearing a Flower Crown, and uh, Happiny is will be in two Ks with the Flower Crown, and you can evolve up to Blissey, and it will wear the Flower Crown. So that's very cool. Uh, we also have uh, oh, in those two K eggs will also be a bunch of Pokemon, but also included Eevee and Pichu with the Flower Crown. So a lot of those costumes coming back. Um, and Shadow Execute will be more common in Team Go Rocket battles. Mega Low Punny will be the Mega that's released for the event. Uh, event exclusive stickers will be available from stops and gifts event exclusive field research and the return of the collection challenge which is really cool i really enjoy doing those and all of this will be happening while we have a bonus of two times hatch candy one hour lucky eggs and half hatch distance all right adam lots to unpack here where do you want to start i want to start with the flower crown happening yeah, because buddy. I know I know on Lurd Up you talk a lot about um, your Chansey and Blissey army. Yes. So you need a lot of XL candy, and I think I that you might need to spend some money and put 2K eggs in super incubators. Um, dude, I I've already I've already had this conversation with myself, and I am in fact gonna go for this, and it's not gonna feel good at all. <laughs> So <laughs> I'm I'm not looking forward to it. I don't have any standard, like extra standard incubators. Everything I have is super incubators, and I've been sitting on a bunch of incubators for a long time because I've been on that single incubator grind. Now I have an actual reason to do it. I want the XL candy. I want the shiny happeny with the flower crown from a 2K. I think that's going to be awesome. The problem is that the pool is exceptionally diluted. There's like... I don't know, 10 Pokemon in the 2Ks. So I, I just hope that this thing is common. And, you know, with the, with the double hatch candy, I don't think that impacts Candy XL, but I'm hoping it does in some capacity because, well, yes. It's, it's a lot of candy, and you're going to need it. Well, I mean, I have 20 maxed level 40 Blissies right now. So it's like I have my whole squad powered up. It's just a matter of, can I get the XL candy and how much of it can I get? I don't know how common these things are going to be in the wild, but I can absolutely see myself like going after specific field research tasks. If the field research is going to give Chansey, those are going to be the ones that I'm tracking down and I'm going to go really, really heavy with it. But uh, how, how's your, your kind of Pokemon Go habits been in general over the past week, week or two? 
I've been trying to play a little bit more frequently. It's been tough because I'm kind of just uh, there's a lot of stuff happening at work, so I'm just focusing on that. Um, but I did play a little bit today, and this morning I caught a shiny scyther, which was super exciting. Nice. I didn't post it anywhere because I, I was on my way to work, but I was just so excited because scyther. I, I have Is that your a, first one? Yes. Oh, nice. I have a a hundo sizer that is a shadow. So I'm trying to get more XL candy to power this thing up even further. And so I saw the scyther and I almost I almost didn't click it and then I said to myself, no, Adam, you need to you need to get the scyther candy. Come on, what are you wow, doing? And I wow. clicked it. I clicked it and it was shiny and I was like, of course it would be. Now That's now it's funny. forcing me not to be able to transfer this. Nice. nice. Yeah, exactly. One less candy. But uh, <laughs> what, do you, what do you think about this event? Fourth through the eighth. Kind of short, but... It is very is short. It, I honestly long expected... Oh. It's definitely long enough. It, yeah, because it's like you got it on a weekend day, and you you have it through Wednesday. Is it Wednesday? No, it goes uh, well, you through said four days. Four days, right? Yeah, so through Thursday. Sunday, Monday, so Tuesday, it's the f- Wednesday. No, it's well, oh. it's the fourth through the eighth. So oh, five oh, okay. days. Yeah. Sorry. So, Still yeah. though, five day event. You know, it's not like a a week. It's longer than a weekend event, but longer, uh, less than you know what we've seen with some of the overarching events. So it's kind of yeah, like right which in the is middle. fine. And I know I know everybody does like the evolutions with um, the flower crown. So hopefully those are in the mix as well. Um, and it will be fun to see Bunnelby as a shiny. I always love it when they introduce new shinies from the new gens. Yeah, and and all I'm saying is they better prepare Sylveon for the Flower Crown. So, uh, you know, there's going to be plenty of of people sitting on Eevees that they catch from this event, waiting for Sylveon to be released. And the Flower Crowns have carried over with all the other evolutions. So hopefully, uh, Sylveon will be no different. Uh, and to, and to what about honest, Mega Low Punny? Any interest there? We kind of talked about this on a little bit on Lured Up and how, you know, it's not the most exciting visually of uh, the Mega Pokemon and it's not particularly useful, but it does fit the Easter theme. So uh, any, I, I definitely will be this? rating these because I, I believe I have 100% um, Lopunny. I, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure I have 100%. Okay, okay. <laughs> If not, it's a like a flower crown one that's a hundred percent. I hope that's not it, because that would be heartbreaking. Do you think? Do you think we're gonna get the ability to evolve the flower crown, Baneri? No, no, Baneri doesn't have a flower crown. It doesn't. I thought it did. No, no. Pikachu, Pichu, Eevee. Oh, but the last time though, right? The last time we had it. No, we don't have a flower crown, Baneri. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, uh, whoa, whoa. Pulling up the game here, Adam. Yeah, what are I you would, talking about, dude? I don't know. I just, I'm loading up my game too because I'm like so confused right now. <laughs> we definitely <laughs> never got that. Like, I, definitely not. I don't know. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure we did. No way. What are you talking about? Um. Yeah, here we go. Uh, let me search Baneri. Not a chance. Not a chance. No way. Yeah, we did. Look, I have it right here. It's a shiny one. Did we really? Yeah, it's got a flower thing on it, but you can't evolve it. I'm sending it to you right now. Did I delete all of my Baneri with the flower crown? I can't. Well, probably because you couldn't evolve it, so you're like, uh. What? And I How do have can... 100% normal, so yes, I will be going after it so I can uh, do, oh my go- do the good thing. And How, how, how did I? This is. What? How? I must have deleted all of them. If you oh came my to goodness. this show from Lured Up, do you, like give Ken a bunch of uh, kind words. Oh my gosh, I can't believe <laughs> that! All right, all right, I'm gonna have to. Uh, so yeah, I'd imagine that that would be back. Why wouldn't it? But wow, that's 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 so strange. I can't believe I did that. Anyway, uh, but thumbs up overall on half hatch distance. I'm I'm yeah, excited that, about that. Honestly, that's the one thing I'm I'm most excited about, just because. You know, it's been a while since we've had that, and it's going to feel nice to put things in eggs again and not have to worry well, that they're, they're going to take 10 years to hatch. <laughs> but this is the thing. You, you want it to be 
you, you kind of want to go into the event with your, your larger eggs, your, your 7, 10, 12K eggs. But once those, those eggs hatch, outside of doing, you know, Team Go Rocket leaders to get the 12Ks, you're probably going to be picking up a bunch of 2Ks. So the half hatch distance is going to have less of an impact because we're going to be using it on 2Ks. So it's like, you know, it, as much as I want to do these 2Ks to get the happening with the flower crown, it just stinks because I know I'd rather be using this half hatch distance on 10Ks, which will probably be absolutely non-existent during, you know, during the event. But I'm going into it with, I'll, you know, it starts tomorrow. So, I mean, I have five 12Ks right now. So at least I have that and I'll, I'll save some distance there. But uh, I am very, very excited about this event just because of the Chansey uh, Candy XL. So I'm looking forward to it. I, I can't wait. And I'm definitely going to do low punny as well. Or Lopany, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think we got we we were good with Lopany. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's transition over to the TCG, and I want to dig into something like I said that I've been uh, I've become very connected with over the past couple sets, and that's the amazing and awesome art that we've seen recently. Uh, we've had the amazing rares, which were great, incredible, incredible full arts trainer cards. You know the the leader cards like absolutely amazing we've had some really hilarious designs and even more of that practical art that i really love and pokemon.com put together a great summary of some of the really cool art uh from battle styles and adam i definitely look forward to hearing uh your perspective on which of these you like and if any of these cards actually have relevance but uh i mean i'll, I'll kind of start here with the tyranitar v which is probably one of the best looking cards I've ever seen ever. And oddly enough, even though it may not have relevance or maybe it does from a playing position, this has been like one of the chase cards of the set because of just how amazing the art is. But what do you think here with the, with all these cards that are featured? I I'm absolutely blown away with the set. There's some amazing art. Like you said, with the Tyranitar, everything's like, it's like he's passed out. He just ate a hundred dinner, different dinner plates. It's so good. And there's a bunch it's of other so Pokemon good. like stuffed with him. And, uh, you know, you've just got so much going on. And in the background, because you've got, um, what's his, the mustard guy. I don't know what his first. Master. Master Mustard. Master <laughs> mustard. You've got a ton of Pokemon that they might not be the new rapid strike or the single strike, but they do have callbacks to the Sword and Shield like areas. So you've right, got right. Master Mustard's house in the background. You've got training fields. And it's just, I don't know. This set's really awesome. There's so many cool cards. Um, and then there's a Pig Knight in the set that is actually the same card of the Tyranitar. It's just backwards. So, like, you have it from Pig Knight's perspective. And oh, you're sitting behind the tree. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where you're the seeing it from both sides. Yeah, is the other oh, side. Oh, so cool. So cool. And no, then I, I got to get my hands on that Tyranitar. Like, I really do. I really, really do. I, I definitely pulled one from a box. Well, Adam, I didn't have a box to open, so I, I've pulled no Tyranitar Vs. <laughs> this is because you didn't go to TNComics.com and get you're abso uh, Yeah, you're absolutely right. 100% <laughs> correct. I cannot argue that point at all. But um, what about – so on this site, they uh, on this landing page here, they, they do break out a couple different art styles and uh, kind of concepts. But they talk about Mustard's Dojo, like you were saying – uh, Esper, Mindfu, which is, you know, Mustard's Pokemon, Drampa, all Pokemon that, that Mustard has been known to use. Um, what uh, what do you think of these cards and how it kind of shows the location from the game? I thought that was a cool callback, like you were saying. I love this because they did this with other sets in the past where, um, I don't know, don't, don't, everybody's going to yell at me, but the set where there's a bunch of Vortexes, and I believe it's Fates Collide, and it's like you can like you see a Fennekin looking down, and it looking into a portal with another Pokemon, and then there's like a sig a Sigilyph, and there's a portal above it, and it's of a city. Hmm. I don't know. So it just it's like. I I love arts that tangle. Like a whole entire concept together. 
like these have all of the dojo and these are all of master mustard's pokemon like that's that's what i love yeah and that that's kind of what the the this website this webpage like highlights is uh these these artistic concepts uh but they also do talk about uh specific artists which you know it's really cool to do some research here because a lot of the artists that are creating current Pokemon cards have been creating Pokemon card art for like two decades or more. And they, they feature an artist named Yuka Mori who has been making some of the cards that I love the most, the practical art, the, like the clay model art. And he put together a, uh, a, a Salandit and a Sizzlepede card, which just have that amazing, you know, photorealistic background with the clay figure kind of sitting in the mix and like it blends so incredibly well. I love these cards so much, dude. <laughs> like these are like my absolute favorite. I really want to start putting together uh, a binder of all the practical art, you know, the, the crocheted stuff, the, the, the like hand drawn on paper stuff and the clay stuff. I just, I love these cards so much. These are so cool. Yeah. We're going to have to make that binder for you as soon as possible. Yeah, I think that'd be a fun, a fun angle to uh, to do some unique collecting and chasing, of just uh, you know, because I'd imagine that these cards, you know, they've been making these practical cards for so long, but they're not typically your chase card or not typically your rare or ultra rare or like expensive card. So I bet no, you I can not, I can try. Normally. Yeah, I could track this stuff down. Yeah, because they're like Weedle cards and stuff. It's like I'm sure I can I can track this stuff down, but I think that'd be a, a really cool project. I got to get into that. But uh, any any other cards here on on these that that jump out at you? There's also like a uh, like this vivid color and lens flare section that shows like Bruxish and Luxray with like really cool uh, like you know lens flare effects on the cards. It's pretty sweet. I mean, I'm. Sir, these ones not not so much. I mean, the clay doll is really cool. There's like the pastel-y colors in the background, and it looks like you can see an aura around him. Right, right. Like honestly, it's it looks like it came out like he was in an Easter basket and came out like that's what you pulled out of your Easter basket. That whole image. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. It's not an egg. It's a clay doll. It's a clay doll. No, it's I, I love when they put these uh these landing pages together. I, I love this and and it makes me want to chase cards for their art and I just love that. I love that angle and I think it's a cool way to collect is based on the art. And, you know, now I'm I'm getting every time I talk about this I get more and more motivated to do this project with, with the binder. So I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to start putting that together. That that would be a cool project to go back and and look at all the old card sets and, and find which ones have the, the real art and, you know, hit up tcgplayer.com or something like that and just start <laughs> acquiring them because, you know, I don't really want to go through all my old sets to try to find these, but, I you know, I, I, I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to do it totally. You got to. And, I mean, this is this – is, oh, my God. The Sizzlepede. So good, right? Like, it it, it's so great. It's, honestly, it's so stunning. Like, the, seeing, well, seeing it – how you like didn't imagine it because every time you've seen it it's just this like thin paper thing and this actually gives it some sort of like weight to it yeah yeah it looks more realistic this looks like an actual bug but like the quality of the photography is so good like it's so crispy clean like that's what just does it for me it like just looks so incredibly high res i love that but yeah very cool stuff. Very cool stuff. All right. Uh, before we take a break, let's shift over to Pokemon Center. There's some really cool stuff on here and uh, stuff that I've never really seen before, including... The question is, is it in stock? You know what? That is a good question. <laughs> <laughs> but they have a bunch of stuff to celebrate the 25th anniversary that you know we've kind of been seeing since February 27th. And there's a ton of cool product. And one of the most amazing products they have right now is a $400 Lionel electric train model that has sounds and it also makes smoke like the actual like you know like a like a steam Choo -choo. train which is so amazing and uh we've there's a bunch of new clothing that features like the Pikachu Pokemon celebration logo like the kind of silhouette kind of thing with their big uh, rosy cheeks 
Uh, it's also worth mentioning there is a hundred and twenty dollar Master Ball replica. Nope, that's that's, that's sold out. It's, it's it's unavailable. Can't buy it. No. Yep. I was literally looking at that. And I'm like, dude, my son would lose his mind over this. Don't look at the thirty dollar. Uh... Pikachu riding an Arcanine statue either. That's that, that's amazing too. That is absolutely amazing. But dude, that Master Ball, I'm bummed. I wanted it. I saw who was it that had it on Twitter? I don't know if it was Rachel Seltzer. Um, I don't know, but someone had it and it was just so amazing. I was like, this thing is legit. Uh, it's made by the Wand Company, so you know they make really, really sick uh, replica stuff. Uh, there's only going to be five thousand of those Master Balls made. They're all hand numbered, so. That's kind of nerdy and exciting, uh, but it, they they have touch and proximity sensing technology. So like as you move your hand towards the master ball, it like lights up and glows. I just thought that was super rad. But uh, anything here that jumps out to you up on Pokemon Center right now? Honestly, the sleeves are pretty cool, but I, I always like the double deck boxes, and it's cheap. You know, it's twelve ninety nine. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not. And I mean, bad. the sleeves I, I, are eight bucks, and then you've got this like rad deck and deck box. Come on. Yeah, they don't, uh, you know, the, when you see the MSRP on the stuff, they it's typically not too heavy, uh, even when, like, the TCG is posted up there. How, how is the TCG doing right now and in, in, from a retail perspective? Is Battle Styles pr- still pretty much off the off the radar? Yeah, everything's pretty much off the shelves. When new stuff comes in, it's oh, it's gone. Like, I know, I know the GameStop that... I know several GameStops that are holding them behind the counters now. They're not even, like, putting them out. Because if they get them... They're sold out. Like they're yeah. they'd be all be would just be ripped off the shelf by one person. You know, I uh, I've been hearing different things from Target stores where they were limiting it to. It used to be limited to four products per person. Now they're down to two products per person. I've also heard some stores are not even putting it out on the shelves. They're actually putting it behind the customer service counter. So the only way to buy the product is to actually go to the customer service counter. Uh, so you know the retailers are probably just like. Happy in one sense that they're able to move this product and turn it over so quick, but not so happy because, you know, the crowds, the the arguing, the fighting, you know, all that that crazy like stuff that's going on. So it's interesting to see them react to uh, to it. But, you know, it, I see it in our discord all the time. Every so often something will pop up on Pokemon Center like a new box or something like that. Everyone goes bananas. They're sharing the link. You know, 20 people <laughs> in the Discord try to get on there to order it. One person gets through. You know what I mean? It's like, it's it really is amazing to yeah, see I, like, I took where an entire things break. have gone. I took an entire break of mine. Like, I, I was walking and going to get my lunch, and I was waiting and waiting and waiting because I had got in. I had one in my cart for the when the, um, the Shining Fates collection boxes so it was a crowbat one i had that in my cart it said oh processing through paypal like getting ready and it was just loading and it wouldn't stop loading um i got down i sat i started eating and i'm like okay i've got five minutes left so it was full 25 minutes that i waited and then i hit refresh and i got the thing that was like oh you're blocked Uh, oh no it seems seems like you're a (laughs) you're a hacking account suspicious activity i'm like oh wow i'm so suspicious thank you oh no oh no it's dude uh you know and and i was in a target today right and i still get that like endorphin rush walking over to the section you know what i mean it's like i know it's gonna be empty (laughs) but i still get that little like you know, little kid excitement, like I'm rolling into Toys R Us, you know, in the holiday and like looking for toys. Like it's just I get that that little hit. It's uh, it's interesting. But yeah, crazy to see how everything, even online, has become just nuts. Absolutely nuts. It's wild. All right, Adam, that's the uh, that's the front half. You ready to take a little breaky break yeah, before we do our watch along? Yeah, All right. definitely. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we will uh, talk about our episode a little bit and watch along with some commentary and wrap things up. But we will be back right after this. Yeah. 
And we're back from our break. Thank you so much for that. It was refreshing and I feel hydrated. So thank you for that. Because I'm like super tired and it's super late. My voice is breaking. I probably should have made some tea, but I didn't. I've got water instead. So that'll I'm have to do. I'm drinking sparkling energy from V8. It's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad. Honestly, it tastes good. <laughs> Interesting. That's that's a that's a that's gonna be a no for me, dog. Actually, I love V8, but it's super high sodium, so I try not to drink it. Anyway. Oh, really? I didn't know that. You well, learn something new every day. Well, maybe not your your energy drink, but I'm sure it's filled with some kind of chemicals. But yeah, look at the back of a V8. Look how much sodium is in it. You're gonna freak out. <laughs> it's it's really high, like really really high. It's like it's like two cans of soups worth of sodium packed in the one little tin of a Ooh. V8 drink. It's so funny. Anyway, little housekeeping to get through before the back half of the show. Uh, this podcast is powered by Patreon. Please check ours out over at patreon.com slash Pokemon Professor, where you can support this show for as little as $1 a month. That $1 will get you access to our patron exclusive Discord, which is a fantastic place filled with fantastic people. And if Patreon isn't your thing, there's still a couple other ways you could help us out. If you're listening on YouTube, you can subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and if you're listening via a podcast service like Apple Podcasts, you can take a moment to leave us a review. Thank you. Uh, also, our merch store is live, PokemonProfessor.com slash merch. All right, Adam, you ready to get into a little, uh, little, little anime action here? I'm stuck. I'm stuck. We're going to have to see what's up with this, but the title of the episode is A Sappy Ending. The original release date in Japan was October 28th, 1999, as episode 119, and in the U.S. it was released exactly one year later, uh, 1028-2000, and is currently episode 115. Also, if you're keeping track via season, this is episode three of the Johto Journeys arc. All right, Adam, you ready to get to this? Yeah. It's a whole new world. Dude. I, I, I it bothers me so incredibly much. <laughs> I can't wait. This is my favorite part because you. All right, we're so gonna we're gonna cut out so the song. Much. We'll catch up with you in a minute when we get to the uh, to the intro of the show. All right, uh, we can start this in three, two, one, go. Just for starters, real quick, the Mew and Mewtwo that show up. It's like why they're just kind of like randomly thrown in there. <laughs> it's legendary. <laughs> Battle music. All right. Well. Yeah, we see the crew walking through the forest. You know, they're already, you know, plotting out that Ash is on his way to get his first, you know, Johto badge. But there's something going on here in the forest. They don't have a single leaf left on their branches. The trees don't look burned, and it's not fall yet, so it's too early for the leaves to drop off. Well, what is it, Brock? You're the expert. I know, Captain Obvious. It's not winter time. They're not. They're not losing their leaves. What are they? So. In the uh, in the lured up community on Discord, we have a fan uh, named Heracross Boss, so we definitely have to bring this episode up to him because it does feature Heracross. All right, a sappy ending, a Adam. I think you're you work react when we're talking about tree sap here and not like sadness sap. Oh, I thought we were getting sad there for a second. <laughs> So I love, you know, we're three episodes into the Johto arc, and it's just, it's always fun seeing the decks get pulled out and, and to hear the, you know, the new voice and to learn about these new Johto Pokemon. It's just, it's just, it's just cool. It's just something we're not used to. You're free to catch the Heracross if you like, but if you do, you might be responsible for causing more harm to this forest than you know. Who's this guy? My name is Woodruff. I'm a ranger. Hi, Woodruff. Ranger Woodruff. And mine's Brock. And my name's Misty. Well, I imagine you're all excited. Well, look at my beard and how amazing it is, and I'm therefore, sure follow me. <laughs> as you can, but you might cause a great deal of damage to this forest if you do. Really? So, it's important to understand how delicate the This is really cool, and one of the cool things I always liked about Pokemon is, you know, it is a kid's show, but they, they do plug in, like, really good messaging and morality, you know, throughout. So they're talking about, you know, yeah, you sure you can go ahead and catch the Heracross, but you're going to definitely mess up the ecosystem here. They need the Heracross to start the sap flowing. The Heracross eats the well and the Butterfree lick the leftovers. Everybody oh, the Butterfree lick the leftovers. Everybody eats, Ash, you tell them. The Butterfree and 
the Heracross may be helping each other, but they're hurting the forest. Nature must be out of balance. I'm afraid the balance has been so, by a dangerous band of invaders. <gasps> so the na so this is this is really cool. It's like a compounding issue. It's like, yeah, Heracross is biting into the trees, Butterfree is eating the sap, and that's great. Uh they're working together, but they're destroying the forest, and then they're saying, yeah, this is out of balance, and now we see this, like, stampeding, stampeding group of, uh, of pincer charging towards them. Last time I saw something like that was Tauros. Yeah, right? Oh, these pincer are scary. Scaring off all the Butterfree and the Heracross, or do the Heracross not care? I don't think the Harris Heracross care. They're just chilling. They, they, not, a, not a single one has moved or done anything besides... Grab the. the uh, sack. Nope, they're piecing out now. Or are they gonna battle? Oh snap! It's a battle. It's a bug battle. Oh, there's two. They're scaredy bugs. Oh, they're scared. <laughs> well, I thought we were gonna get to see a cool bug battle, but the uh, the Heracross just bugged out and ran away with the tail between their legs. The Heracross would rather take flight than stay around and fight. Sometimes that's a pretty smart philosophy. Yeah, but if the Heracross don't fight off the pincer, all the trees the Butterfree feed on will be destroyed. So, I guess the pincer were the, the invaders that they're talking about? It's trying to protect that Butterfree that got left behind. The butterfly has, the Butterfree has wings. <laughs> Just fly away. Oh, ow, ow, ooh, ow. They're ganging up on Heracross. Just taking one for the team. That is, yeah, that is not fair. <laughs> Save the day, Bulbasaur. Come on, you gotta step in, dude. Oh, Bul yo, Bulbasaur, dude, that was amazing. Bulbasaur just wrecked six pincer. That was like a, a six times critical hit. <laughs> Charizard used flamethrower, burns down the forest. <laughs> See, Pinter always looked like that one thing from, uh, I believe it's the never-ending story. And it was like that big machine thing that would walk out, and then it got attacked by the little wind-up cars. That's just what Pinter reminds me of. What? I, I yeah, know. I don't know. I, I'd have to look at it. Try to find it. So who's this super cool Heracross right here? This is like Hero Heracross. Look how happy he looks. So happy. Nope, he oh my to god! His, uh, oh, oh, that's right. Oh my god! I remember this episode now. <laughs> uh, the Heracross was just sucking on the top of uh, Bulbasaur's bulb, trying to get some sap out of it, I guess, and uh, that was really weird. Oh no! Maybe. <laughs> Brock knows what's up. <laughs> I'm afraid it won't be long before those pincer are right back. What? Why are they coming here? The pincer they want the sap, yo. Have always lived together in peace because they each had their own forest. But recently, something's been driving the pincer across the river from <laughs> their forest. <laughs> I like how the map. It's like a it's like a war strategy board <laughs> showing the pincer crossing or the the pincer crossing over to the to the Heracross side. If we don't do something to help, the whole forest could be destroyed. Oh, yeah. She's like, Ash, but you're, you're, aren't you trying to get gym badges? <laughs> stay stay like, focused, you, dude. Don't you know that I'm, I'm scared of bugs? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. I understand now. Good call, Adam. Good call. And as, and as soon as they're like, oh, something something is driving the pincers this way, I'm like, ah, uh, just Team Rocket. There's no way. Yep. There's no way it couldn't be Team Rocket. Dude, that guy is tall. Don't look now, but we've got some company. I bet Heracross wants me to be its protector. Is that and so I this is the I same Heracross that was that was last in the tree is following them now? He's so happy though. Look at his happy face, even when he's getting like frenzy planted. <laughs> Bulbasaur's so angry. He's like, stop following me. You can't you can't suck on my bulb anymore. Look out! <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Get inside, bro. Doing the whole time. Wow. Wow. Look at how 
how deep that canyon is. So, is this the canyon from the map? Yep. Alright, yeah. So, like, Heracross can fly. I mean, so there's like an Indiana Jones-style bridge. But the bridge is destroyed. Yeah, he's like, oh, there's, a, there's an old-fashioned rope, rope bridge. Aha! The pins are jumping across from tree to tree. That's how they're getting across. Take the time to do something like that. It wasn't the pincer. Pincer don't cut things like this. These ropes were sawed up by a human being. That had to be Team Go Rocket Woodruff. Be someone who doesn't want anybody snooping around the pincer's forest. Well, they're not gonna stop us. We're going to that pincer forest no matter what. But how do we get there? Yeah. Fly over on Charizard. No, put Onyx out and let, let's just walk across <laughs> him. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> He's he's gonna make you a bridge, Misty. Maybe we're wrong. Maybe it's trying to help. Yep. Maybe it's got a plan. Yeah. I'm glad someone has a plan, Brock. Not like anyone like you or anyone else you're with. <laughs> Man, this hair cross just put pushed a whole tree. And made a nice 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 bridge. But now it's a bridge for a pincer. I like how the bridge, the the tree is like right between the handrails of the of the existing bridge, so you could still hold on, sort of. <laughs> You're nuts! I'm not walking across this thing. You tell them, Misty. They are nuts. Oh, Togepi just oh. jumps out of her <laughs> dances. <laughs> I know it's so funny. <laughs> Togepi, All right, Togepi almost literally died. almost died. Almost fell from two thousand feet up. Togepi has, has not had a care about its well-being in two seasons. <laughs> All Heracross can think about is the sap. He's like, oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's Pikachu. Uh, it's Armadillo. Armadillo, man. It's Pikachu. Oh, it's Don Fan. Oh, that's right. It's Pikachu. All right, so what are we? We are 11 minutes into the episode. No sign yet of Team Rocket. That's definitely fishy. Get ready. We have to stay alert. We're almost at the Pincer's Forest now. Oh, great. I feel like the Pincer's Forest should have been there like a long time ago. Why don't they just like get their Pokemon out and ready to defend them? This Heracross is like, I have no idea where I'm going. The tallest tree. That's where the Pincer lives. They're all in there. Look, up near the top. It's a giant pincer. Is that a pincer? Wow, I didn't know pincer got that. Big. It looks like it's got jetpacks on it. Yeah, what's up with his back? It's some kind of robot that looks like one. What? It's huge, and it looks like it's built out of steel. What? It's a monster. This sounds like Team Rocket to me. Oh, here we go. Do, 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 do. <laughs> what's with why the, is there a uh, razor the, leaf? Yeah, what's with the razor leaf going on? <laughs> Which, what are they, what one of their Pokemon is using this? And how are the leaves like perfectly avoiding them so they don't get cut? Yeah, because if it was Victory Bell, it would be just slicing James. That's <laughs> right. that was such a great. That's right. It was so like plain. Oh my gosh. It seems like only yesterday, but it was two days ago. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's like a it Meowth yesterday. montage. Of course they're starving. I, th th I don't think there's ever enough attention given to eating and sleeping <laughs> and normal life stuff. It's just like the show must go on, and they never talk about that stuff. They're like, all right, we're hungry. We just got to a new area, and then they don't eat, and no one talks about it again. Yeah, because the smell is enough to give them like a, a little bit of hunger relief. I would just, I, I would put Meowth right on the rotisserie. Be good to go. That gloopy goop I would sell his gold coin. Are you gonna try James? Yeah, exactly. Get a little payday. <laughs> oh, Meowth is in on the sap too. 
weren't so famished, I wouldn't even consider oh, touching no. the sappy stuff, but... Oh no! Oh, they're all eating it. This is weird. They're double dipping. What kind of trees are these? I could use the million bucks. Can I have it back? No, it belongs to me. I could use the million bucks. Pancake house, and instead of using maple syrup, I'll slap on the sap. Then I'll add my own blend of Limburger cheese and Cajun curry. I love how this is going so deep down the rabbit hole of just ridiculous Team Girl Rocket stories right now. Like she's just envisioning this. It's so funny. All right, battle them, dude. What are you waiting for? He's hungry now. You know how Ash gets with his stomach? Dude, I would get Charizard out of the Pokeball, torch them up, string them up, and move on with your day. What are you waiting for? They already did the motto. Go get them. <laughs> Ta-da! Invaded Heracross territory to look for food because Team Rocket's been draining all theirs away. Ah, uh, now you're getting somewhere, Brock. Good looking out on the explanation. Thank you. Without thinking about the consequences first. That's right. The Heracross and Pinsir got along fine till the three of you showed up here. Well, they broke up the ecosystem, Ash. There you go. You tell them. Ooh, the whole balance of nature. <laughs> good good one. Good comeback. Alright, let's get some battle. Alright, we got Lincoln Sun. I will never get over that scream. Wait. Is this gonna be a delayed reaction to it biting James's head? Oh, it's going for the sap! <laughs> Yellow bellied sap sucker, and there you go. Oh, Lickitung's in, in, like, he's like, I was made for this. Oh, here comes P Super Pinsir. Yeah, what's up with this Pinsir, dude? This is dude? what we need in, in Pokemon Go. We need, like, raid bosses like this that will, like, just give us, like, a ton of Stardust or something. And just this could have, like, be our 100-person raid. Yeah. Yo, Bulba's getting the action today. Oh no. Metal pincers like shrugged off the razor leaf. Now what? Now what? Now what? Now what are you going to do? It's not human. It's not going to get dizzy. Yeah, I like how the it? robot gets dizzy. I know. That's what I was going to say. It's not it's not alive. It's going to get dizzy. So now it's it's electric steel. <laughs> Let the bug, juice fly. bug electric steel type. Wow. Oh no! Everybody got shocked. No. No. James, are you trying to kill them all? Dude, this pincer is evil. Do something. You have 800 Pokemon on you. Like use them. <laughs> You literally have a Charizard. Oh, snap. The happy-go-lucky Heracross is stepping up to the plate. Because Ash couldn't, you know, make a decision. Nuh-uh. Nuh-uh. Listen to the noises it's making. It's weird. Hang in there, Woodrow, Woodruff. <laughs> Wood, Woodruff, Woodrow. Yo, the Heracross is determined, and is pushing back now on the on the pincer. I thought you hated all the bug Like, how, <laughs> like they, they're so they're so bold. They're like, all right, we can just go take its tanks off right now. I love Team Go Rocket in fighting. That's the best. They're gonna blame it on Meowth. Okay, we got all the sap back, 
Alright, so they got two giant tubs of sap. Oh, oh Yo, no. it's body pressing it with its, like, horn. Is he gonna slam it? He's gonna, like, seismic toss it? Yep, that's exactly what, what he said. What? Dude, that's sick! Dude, the Heracross just seismic tossed the, the fake pincer. So good. Right, that was amazing. A referee. Oh, the hey, now the team oh, the pincer. They knew what was up with the fake pincer, so that's was uh. These pincer won't need to leave their habitat, and the Pokemon can live. Ah. It's a happy ending. Why don't they like bust open those canisters and have a party? <laughs> That's what they're doing. <laughs> no, they're back on the they're tree. Right, right, no, they're right there. They were Where at the they? bottom of the screen. Yeah, I, I missed the it. Pin, the pincers had now them. The and the can live in peace again here in their own forest. Oh. That's right, Ash. The trees are safe. The balance of nature's been restored, and things are back. Tell them, Woodrow. Heracross is like, please dude, take my me. My with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, kind of. You're supposed to say Heracross, dude. Oh, don't take it back, Misty. You hate them. Heracross is like, no, no, no. Come, no, I want to go with you. Take yeah. me. This Woodruff guy is creepy. <laughs> so, I, I guess we're not getting anywhere with the Johto League of <laughs> this episode. No, they just, they basically did like a lateral movement. They were like, let's step to the left. Wait, look! Oh, we're getting Heracross? What? I feel like this happens with a lot of his Pokemon. Well, because they, like, they see him. how they love, how much he loves Pikachu, and they want that. Look how pleased and happy he is to get inside that Pokeball. That's great. I don't know the dynamics of that. Normally, the Pokeball just lands on the ground, but somehow it no, absorbed it, hair across. It was like one of those yo-yos on a string, like the yo-yo ball. <laughs> now, Ash wow, Ash, that was a difficult catch for you, dude. <laughs> Alright, well, now is, is that Ash's only bug type now? I think so. I think so. I'm stuck on it. So, interesting episode. You know, tangential. Not particularly action-packed. There was a little bit of battling at the end, but not much. Uh, I guess they. it's good because Ash acquires a new Pokemon. But other than that, this was kind of like a, all right, what else kind of scenario, right? Like, there was, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's like I, I, last week's episode. I don't. I didn't mind that they weren't driving towards the badges so much because it was hilarious. We were laughing the whole time. This one, you know, not so comedic, but also not so serious. So, I don't know. I don't know. It is what it is, I guess. But uh, yeah, that's 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 a sappy ending. It didn't have a sappy ending. It had a happy ending. He, the, he joined the team. Well, anyway. I think I think at that point now it became as sappy as in like let's cry about it mm. because it's such an emotional time. Yeah, yeah. For Heracross, at least, between the sap and being sappy. I guess. I guess we'll go with that, Adam. <laughs> but Adam, I uh, I we talked about this before we hit record. I haven't bought a pack of Pokemon cards in weeks, and that's because I haven't seen any. And I'm not going through the proper channels to get the ones that we have accessible to us because I'm the worst. But that just means you're going to have to uh, open some fire right now. What do you have? I have a sword and shield pack. All right. What's the uh, what's the preferred card here? Uh, I just want a gold quick ball. A gold quick ball. Gold Sending quick ball you mojo nice. for the gold quick ball, Adam. All right. It's a white code card, so hopefully there's there's something. It would be nice. Uh, Darkness Energy, Hyper Potion, Citrus Berry, Corvus Squire, Rukadi, Sizzilopede, Asnam, Mawile, Gossifler, Reverse Hollow is a Skroopy, and a Snorlax V Max. 
Oh, Ooh. take it. Yes. Yeah, no, that's sweet. That's awesome. All right. That's great. That's that's a win. Okay. That's a I, huge I'm win. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Heck yeah. Because his belly wow. when, he, when he dynamaxes is kind of like the forest that Ash was just in. So it, there you relevant. go. See, it's relevant. It's relevant. To the episode. <laughs> take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. But Adam, that was a show. Short and sweet today. Short and sweet. I Short love it. Sweet. Sweet, sweet like the sap that they were eating. Yes, yes. Dude, I, I don't, like, they made it like honey, but, like, it's not honey, dude. You're still eating sap. <laughs> and it's not maple syrup. It's sweeter. It's better oh. than that. Anyway, thank you so much, everyone, for giving us a listen. We really do appreciate it. Please check out LuredUp.com for everything we have going on with our other show, Lured Up, for Pokemon Go. Check out SpecialConditionsTCG.com for our Special Conditions show that Adam does that focuses on the TCG. And check out PokemonProfessor.com for everything we have going on with the network. And, of course, GottaWatchThemAll.com uh, here. So just check out PokemonProfessor.com. You can get links to everything that we're doing, all the different shows, all the different feeds. Definitely check it out. Um, email us info at gotta watch them all.com. You can leave us a text or voicemail 732-835-8639. And if Adam, that's it, I believe then, then we can kind of say that that's it. And I would just like a confirmation from you if whether yeah, or not get, this don't get is stuck on it, it. Yeah, that's it. Awesome. Don't forget trainers. If you can't be out there catching them all, hang out with us and watch them all. We'll see you next week. Yeah.